make it, make it, do it Makes us harder, better, faster, stronger Get that, 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 that don't kill me Can only make us stronger Yeah, it's uh, a little bit of luck, bounce the ball A couple of good calls um, Things that haven't really gone our way over the last month In the real tight games So yeah, it was I think it shows the character in the team That we've just not <laughs> We've not been knocked off track We've kept doing the things that we practice. We've kept sticking to our philosophies and ideologies. It's one of those kind of symptoms where you can see things in the team that are strong. Like we said, we've got to learn to win. <laughs> that's, and it's hard to learn to win without actually putting the process in place of performing well. So that's, I think the processes are pretty, pretty strong now. Um, like I said, there's, there's some errors in us that we need to get rid of. Um, there's a bit of quality at certain parts of the field that we need to keep working on. But our commitment, our enthusiasm to work for each other is um, very apparent. I spoke to somebody who was behind the post uh, after the game, but somebody knew who was behind the post. He said that drop goal from Reese was going outside and then at the last minute ducked in. So even God, if he existed, he sort of seems to be on your it side. It must have been God because Reese didn't take it. Uh, Joe. Uh, <laughs> it's, yeah, Joe. Mm. Well, it's something on our side, yeah, a little bit. But I think he said he used the wind well. That's mm. what he said. He <laughs> practiced it already. Uh, Joe, Reese, Kevin, all were sensational. Outstanding, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, we, we kicked really well. You know, we found the points in the field that we wanted to. We put them into places that made it hard for them to get some field position. Um, like I say all, all three of those indicators. I thought Lloyd played particularly well. I thought Aaron Heremeyer gave us a big spark. I thought we dug in. We looked a little bit at the start of the game. Like I say we couldn't have started any worse, really. Like I say the knock on from Lloyd and then the penalty on the back of a kick chase. Just gave them territory too early and gave them a bit of a boost. But I think that was a little bit of a kickback from the week before. It's, like I say we've played the week before, and although they've had a couple of weeks to get ready for this game, the the build up to the Warrington game was huge. I say it was a massive derby, it was a cup game, it was and we gave everything we could. Mm -hmm. And we're very unlucky not to come out the right side of the scoreline. Then to go to the lead, I thought there was a little bit in that first ten minutes there was a little bit of this this is tough. Mm -hmm. Once we clicked into gear and we I say we got in the fight, mm -hmm. say at um at ten six, like we were in the fight at sixteen, ten, it was it was all on. You were playing the lead side, that they they showed quite a bit of desperation, didn't it? It was the last chance to learn for them in terms of having any possibility of, of making the eight. Uh, and they played hard. They've had a tough year. and um, it's, I, say, well, I wish I had a tough year and I don't want a day on the field. It's, it's £2 million pounds worth of talent running out on the field. I saw the team sheet before and I thought, we're going to have to play well today. Like you said, the desperation that's in their, their camp, the understanding that what lies ahead if they didn't get these four wins, and they started hard, they came hard at us and they ran hard and they tackled hard, they were driving us back. And like I say, you could sense there was a, an air of anxiety and that's what that kind of end of the table does to you, no matter what kind of quality side you've got, and not, no matter how many internationals you've got in your team. The anxiety of what what's beneath you can be, can change the way a team functions. And I thought that we've already experienced that. We're in a, we were looking forward and not looking back. They were just trying to claw themselves out of a hole, mm -hmm. and it got to them in the end. I thought they were right. and we, we scored some really good tries. Uh, we created some real good opportunities as well. We're unfortunate to get over the line a couple of times. Mm -hmm. But I'd say we'd sit with Brian, and he'd probably say the same. Mm -hmm. um, in that 10 minute period before your drop goal, Leeds put a fair amount of pressure on your line, but your, des your desperation in defence there basically prevented them creating the opportunity that they needed, didn't it? Well, we, we wanted to win. Mm -hmm. That will to win, we say sometimes it's been there and we've lost, but it's never not been there. It's that putting yourself in a position to to get in the way of a ball, to get in the way of a man. And you saw that in that 10 minutes there. You saw it in the period in the first half as well on our goal line. Mm -hmm. Some fantastic goal line D from Players you wouldn't expect from Kevin Brown make some fantastic reads on our goal line. Rhys Hanbury was in a couple of contacts, which is quite unusual for Rhys to say that he prevented tries through some good D. Mm -hmm. It was it was a real strong defensive performance. I mean, like I said, we were, we were disappointed in the two tries that they scored when they just crashed over. That's not something that's in us at the moment. And I said it wasn't anything that they created, they didn't pull anybody out of place. It was just a 
it was a man on man, make your tackle kind of situation that we were pretty disappointed with those two points. Have you worked out yet how Joel Mellor didn't score in the first half there? He you? dropped it, that's how he didn't score. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's gonna put the ball down, he's got a bit of a clip. And like I said, we can't even blame the rain this time, can we? Mm. It wasn't raining or uh, yeah, he's, he knows he's got to get that ball down. I get what's what's strong in the team is the fact that we respond again. Like Joe doesn't let it go affect him in any way. He knows he should score. He comes back, he resets himself, and he puts in a real strong performance. Like I say, he scores not long after a very similar kind of play that we we looked at in the week about him causing problems by just attacking the line. Mm. A look at the league table says now that you're in a very strong position in terms of avoiding having to play in the qualifiers, but but not mathematically safe. And you'd still want to pick up points, don't you? In the we're, end, so. we're like say we're looking up. Mm -hmm. I say you've got the conversation with the team today is we've got ten games, we've got twenty points to play for. Mm -hmm. Anything is possible. We've got twenty points to play for. Let the other sides take care of themselves, and if we can go out there and, and pick up a large majority of them. Which we can, which we've shown. Like I said, we beat. We, we should have beaten Leeds. We've beaten Leeds twice this year. We should have beaten Wigan twice this year. We've beaten Hull. We've beaten Huddersfield. So we've been two points off from Warrington. It's like, I said, we've got we got St Helens in a buoyant mood. They, these are points that we believe that we can get, and that's now the conference moving forward for the rest of this year, of how high we can finish. Saints must be in pretty buoyant mood too. They've scored 40 odd points in each of the last two games. Apparently played very well in attack yesterday. So uh, they're fancying their chances of still making the, the playoffs. Yeah, that, well, that's, that's makes for a great contest, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. We said they've had a they've had a tough time with half back injuries, and but they've also had some quality people to put in there. We said it's not a bad half back pairing when you can use um, Jordan Turner and you can use Wilkin in their positions too. Two players with good kicking games, two players with good passing games, and two players that love to compete and win. And then you stick James Rope. That's like I say, it's not General Lomax is playing for well. it's, it's one of those where you looked at Leeds team sheet and you went, geez, that's a good side. You do the same when you look at St. Helens. Mm -hmm. And what we've got to do now is we've just got to go there and be the best we can be and work hard to get the result that we um, will deserve. You've had some good games against them in the last few years, but they tended to edge you out, haven't they, despite some good performances? Yeah, no, I think that's. That's, I think that's one of those places where we sit at the moment when we're competing against those top sides. We know, we know we're a good team, and we're just on the wrong side of some really tight games. And I said before, it's learning to win, learning to win those tight games. It takes, it takes, a, it takes an experience in the player to have to go through that and then come through the other side. And it takes time. It's, it, and we're putting ourselves in that situation now. I said we wouldn't, we don't want to be in that six, seven, eight, nine, ten kind of category in the team. But when you look at our salary cap, when you look at the kind of team we are, that's where we probably are. Mm -hmm. Our job now, or my job and the team's job, is to recruit and keep pushing us and make us into a two, three, four, five, six team. <laughs> the one that's pushing into that area, and that's the challenges of, from each stage of the years and as we push through is to get yourself not to jump from the bottom to the top mm -hmm. and hang on and stay in there. I spend a lot of money is to constantly keep improving and pushing yourself into different places through the table and when they changed the rules last year they took it from um, they took it from licensing to promotion relegations it, it made that a lot tougher again because you had to look at different kind of ways of recruitment you had to look at different ways of winning and the desperation factor came into it and the love of jeopardy in this country seemed to take over well seeing as you brought up recruitment um, I'll, I'll run by you the, 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 the scuttle book that's in the papers and what have you. Um, it, it's alleged that uh, St. Helens are keen on taking Kev Brown from you. I'm, so would I be as well? I'd be keen on taking Kev Brown if I was another top side. There are halfbacks are a, a rare commodity at the moment, mm -hmm. and I think that what they've seen when they went out and spent close to a hundred thousand pound on Travis Burns last year, and it didn't work for him. Mm -hmm. And whatever they spent on bringing in Theo Farge, and he's got injured. And yeah, they're, they're, they're a, Kev's a particularly good one. Mm -hmm. So I think that when you look at the fact that yeah, he's a good kind of half back, they're a, they're a that side that believes that they should be in grand finals and Challenge Cup finals, then it's 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 not unheard of that they would do that. Mm -hmm. And I've heard that we're signing Jamie Howard, mm -hmm. who's on a half a million dollars in Australia. So 
if I can get rid of half my team, <laughs> no, <laughs> that'll be something, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'd, again, these things are going to happen. We're a side in the middle that people are going to pick at, especially our good players. It's been it's happened with Reese, it's happened with Joe Mellor, it's happened with Lloyd White. It's, it's happened with Alex Chera. It's happened with all the players that have performed really, really well for us. Kev's in the international setup at this moment in time, and he's probably a target for one of those top three or four sides, so to speak. So as far as you know, there's nothing in the brown or sour things at this moment in time, as far as you know. Well, like I said, I've read it in the paper like you have. So if, well, if anybody one, knows anything, it's not me. The other one is uh, alleged <laughs> that witness is keen on Tom Armstrong from Lee. Is that is there anything in that? At this moment in time, we're, we're looking at recruitment, yeah, I've mm -hmm. spoken to his agent, I've spoken to a lot of other people's agents, and Tom was somebody we looked at, I looked at when we, started, when we came to Super League, he went off and did a degree, um, wanted to stay part-time, not go full-time, he's quick, he's, he's one of the best centres in the Championship, I think there's a number of clubs interested in him as well, mm -hmm. well that's what his agent tells me. <laughs> uh, injuries this week, Dennis, Helen May went off with a head knock, I think, how was he after the game? He'll not play. He'll not play this week. No, it's too quick to shoot turn around. Mm. Um, it's a tough one for Aaron because he feels like he's okay, but we've got to be led by the medical team. This is really important the, um, aspect of the game that we've got to, and we feel at this club that it's something that we need to push forward. We've got we can't let it be player led. It's got to be medical led. Mm -hmm. And like saying, he took a fair old whack to the head, and the doctors believe that he's. Um, if it was a seven day turnaround, mm -hmm. there's a possibility. Mm -hmm. But because we play Friday night, it's just too soon to put any risk into into Aaron. And he wants to play, I say he's like he's fuming probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's like, he wants to be out there. But like for his health and for for his safety we've got to be we've got to be smart with this. Did most of the people seem to come through okay? Well I like say it's, it's, like I say um, Sunday afternoon and we're saying Monday morning, it's a tough yeah. one with mm -hmm. short turnaround. I'm waiting on my medical team, it's one of those where you'll wait for the Grim Reaper to turn around the corner and come walking into the office. But hopefully he's, um, he's going to come in with a smile on his face mm -hmm. after we've um, had an assessment this morning. Mm -hmm. And anybody, uh, what's the situation with him and is he, is he going to play again this Yeah, season? well, I'm, I'm, we're pushing hard to see, yeah. Mm -hmm. he's, it's just it's nerve damage, it's one of those kind of strange things where he's lifting weight now, he's strong, he's looking, he's looking a lot better over the last week and a half than it was two weeks ago. But you, we've just got to be patient, patient with um, that kind of injury. Especially where Eamon's come from with with a neck injury. And like I say, he's got a frame in his neck and he's had some problems through that. So we've got to be really smart and take a, take it to the, like, to the point where we know he's 100%. Even like I say, putting Raymond out there 95 or 94%, it's not mm -hmm. really, not really, on. We've got to wait till he says, everybody, everybody clears him, he's 100%.